Hello everyone and welcome to Mark Williams Media YouTube channel. Remember, as always, click on that subscribe button if you want to be updated with our new videos. Today we have a treat for you. We are in Akasaka, Tokyo. We are going to look at two important places, one a temple, one a shrine, both very historical and both very famous in this region. So let's go and check them out. This temple is called Toyokawa. Now, Kawa in Japanese meaning river. Now, this temple is actually a sister temple. So the head temple is actually in Aichi uh, Prefecture. But this is its sister temple. And it's dedicated to the Soto sect of Buddhism. And it was founded in 1887. Now, the temple itself is a very interesting one because it combines Shinto and Buddhist philosophy. Under Shinbutsu, the uh, Shinto shrine and the Buddhist temple were one and they merged very um, significantly. However, this temple was built in 1887, which was the part of, or the start rather, of the Meiji Restoration. And during this period, the Meiji um, emperor wanted to separate the shrines and the Buddhist temples and wanted to make the shrines more significant to instill nationalism and pride in Japanese culture. This era or this policy was called Shinbutsu Bunri. This temple fought very much against the Shinbutsu Bunri and it won. The temple itself has many little statues and I will explain some of these statues as we go. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to focus on some of the uh, deities found here in this temple. But this statue here, as you can see, is dedicated to children and childbirth. You have the Buddha Vista with um, the baby in her arms. And so people come here to pray for, um, if they're pregnant, to pray for a, a safe childbirth, um, but also for the safety of their children. Here you have the main hall area. And here you have a lovely little garden. And these little gardens are often found in temples. Usually temples have forests as well. Uh, this one doesn't. Um, it just has a lovely little garden. We then come to the absolution area which is here and the absolution um, fountain is actually a double-headed dragon isn't that amazing so coming back across from there we have another um, secondary shrine or a subordinate shrine and we have the main temple here dedicated to Buddhism of course guarded by two foxes the Kitsune turning to our left from the uh, main Buddhist prayer area we come to another area and this area is dedicated very much to the fox and this area is very much Shinto in its styling. If you look the kitsune, the fox is welcoming us in. These flags here are symbols of happiness, good luck, safe travel and health. We have the traditional emmas like in most shrines and temples and again you know that this is definitely the temple part because you have the incense but coming back into the shrine part again some statues and I'll talk about these statues later you have more subordinate shrines dedicated to the kitsune and then here you have more flags dedicated to good health, 
and um, wealth and safety. This area you know is a shrine because if we move the camera up, you can see the great Tori. So here, despite the Shinbutsu uh, Bunri separation, this area managed to keep the beautiful shrine and the beautiful temple together as one, even though during the Meiji period this was not allowed. So this is very unique and special here in this temple shrine precinct. Coming this way, we are greeted by this, which are a series of um, statues portraying the various poses of the fox. Now, why is the fox so special? The fox is the messenger from the gods. And usually he's the messenger for rice and good harvest. And so you have various poses of the fox. Now, historically, this part of the, um, of the temple stroke, stroke shrine um, was created because the third emperor of, um, of Japan had a dream. And in the dream, he saw a fox. And he saw a fox dancing away and um, on his back was a goddess. And so this area, that the emperor decided to make this area a dedication to the wonderful fox. They wear red for luck. So the foxes, look at this one, this is a kawaii fox. The foxes are wearing red to symbolize luck. Coming out of this part of the shrine area for uh, Toyokawa, we come into a secondary shrine. And again, this secondary shrine is dedicated to the fox. And this shrine is more Buddhist in its uh, feel than the other one, which is much more Shinto, even though both are within the Tori gates. Now look at these foxes. You can hear the beautiful sounds of the birds. And here are the subordinate shrines, but these are dedicated to Buddhism, not to the Shinto. And you know also that this, is, this area is Buddhist, not only because of the um, incense area, where you can light a candle here and place it in here, but also because of these mantras. The purple, purple is a very Buddhist um, color. And these decorations here are also very Buddhist. So it's fascinating that during the Meiji period, such a combination could occur. And here, despite the Buddhism, you also have a Shinto shrine. So these, these inter, in, in, interpositions of Buddhism and Shintoism, which was, were, were, were kind of um, uh, not supported, kind of um, were frowned upon and discouraged, were actually encouraged and worked here in this area. Okay, coming back to the start of the temple shrine complex. Um, Toyokawa. We are going to now try and hunt for these. The seven deities or the seven gods of luck in Japan or good fortune in Japan. Now it's interesting that only one of these is actually Japanese, one of these is Indian and the rest probably um, have roots in either Korea or China. Now the one that is Japanese is the first one we see and this is 
Ebus. The deity Ebus is the only Japanese deity uh, in the, within the seven lucky gods. And he is usually portrayed as a fat man carrying some fish. So he is a fat fisherman. He's probably the most famous deity here in, um, in Japan. And he is known for um, his development or the god of good progress. So when people want to progress and do well, um, if people want to talk about the development of their nation or their, um, or their life, they usually pray to Ibis. This deity is known for longevity and his name is Juro. Now Juro Jin um, is portrayed often as a Finn man with a long stick scroll. And so for a healthy life and a long life, he is the deity people um, usually pray to. Okay, just to the left of the main shrine, we have found our next deity. And this deity um, is dedicated to wealth, usually portrayed holding a bag of jewels. Um, and this deity's name is Daiko Kuten. So Daiko Kuten, Daiko Kuten, um, the deity for wealth, is found here. And this is his beautiful um, subordinate shrine which is dedicated to wealth and success in terms of money and here is the deity that represents that. Now this deity as you can see is a bearded man with a stick and he is Fuku Oku, Fuku Oku deity and he represents happiness and wisdom. So people come to this deity to pray for happiness and wisdom. Moving along, and we have a Buddha Vista, we come to another one of these beautiful deities situated right next to this lovely, beautiful Inari setting. So here we have this deity, a fat man with a fan in his hand and you can see here the fan in his hand representing cleverness and the guardian of good fortune for children. And his name is Hotei-san. Hotei-san. So Hotei-san is very funny in a way because he is fat, his clothes do not fit him. So his clothes are hanging down because he is fat. Um, and so many children often have funny stories about Hotei-san and the fat god who looks after them, but whose clothes are too small for him. And this deity is actually an Indian deity. So as I said, Ibis was a Japanese deity and the rest are either Chinese or Korean. But this deity is actually an Indian deity, uh, Benzinten and she is always portrayed with a musical instrument playing and she's always a young girl. And she is dedicated to music as well as beauty. So many ladies come here uh, to pray for beauty and many people who are musicians also come here to pray for her good luck. So there you have it. The seven deities of Japan all contained in one beautiful complex. So there you have the beautiful uh, Toyokawa shrine stroke temple. Well, it's actually a temple, but it's called the Toyokawa Inari Temple, which um, is, as I said, is a great testament to this temple that it survived the Meiji uh, Shinbutsu uh, Bunri separation and still survived and did very well. This is a sister temple um, and the main temple which I recommend you visit is in Aichi uh, Prefecture in uh, 
Toyokawa um, city. The next shrine we are going to visit is a very special shrine here in Akasaka called Hieji Shrine. And that is dedicated to the Hieji Mountain or the Hieji Yama in uh, Shiga Prefecture. And it was created in the 1400s under the third emperor of Japan. We have to go through Akasaka to get there, so let's head now. Oh, 